you know what? Screw it. I'm close to the house. She can come get me if it breaks. She can pull me with a chain. I'll get on it a little bit for you guys. Before we get into this video, I do want to go ahead and mention that DirtyDiamondDiesel.com is now live. You guys can purchase key tags. We got stickers. Uh, I really like the key tags. I think they're pretty sick, honestly. The color in the picture is a little off, but I really love these key tags. Um, we have stickers on there. You can get a Dirty Diamond Diesel sticker. And we also now have AirDog products on there. Guys, we're slowly going to be adding a lot of different products on there. Hoping to have exotic head studs on there very soon that you guys can order. And, um, you know, I, I basically just want to be able to supply you guys with parts, talk with you guys one on one, and, you know, determine what parts would be the best for your truck. So be sure to leave a comment uh, down below. Let me know what you guys think of everything. And, yeah, let's get into the video. Welcome back to the channel. We are out here in the garage tonight. It is a Thursday night. And,. We've been busy last couple days, guys. We got uh, everything wrapped up. We got that rear main seal wrapped up in that uh, third gen. Um, got the F-250 wrapped up. Got Alex's truck wrapped up. We do have another job coming up. We're going to start on tomorrow, probably. And it's not going to be diesel. It's going to be Hemi. We're going to be putting Hemi in. It's a 5.7. And the uh, um, lifters and cams making really bad noise in that. And one of the bolts is like broken off in the block. And it's just not worth messing with. It's really crusty for some reason. So we're just going to put a whole new engine in it. But we'll be swapping that tomorrow. And we'll have the section pulled in because we have some sweet parts for it. Um, we'll go ahead and start by saying we have a Smetting T4 manifold ready to rock on this thing. Uh, I still got to tighten the bolts up. I say ready to rock, but still got to go through and torque all the bolts that hold it to the head. And then we'll be installing, obviously, our turbo next. And if you guys didn't know, we're going big on this thing. Yes, it is a VP truck, VP44. Um, it's got 125 horse, which is like a 7x9 injector. And it's just got an edge comp box on it. But we're going to be going big. We're going to put a big turbo on this thing. It's a Smetting 467. So it's an S400 frame charger um, with an 83 exhaust wheel and a 90 housing. So it's going to be laggy, but I think with the setup that I have, I think we're going to be able to fine tune it. I think it's going to drive good. Um, that's what the end goal is to have something that still drives and maybe even you could pull a trailer with it. I don't know if that's realistic, but um, usually whenever you put these on, whenever you see these on these trucks, they run like crap. They're super smoky. They're laggy, but this, I'm not going to get too far into detail on it. I'm actually going to save that for separate videos, but I think, I think we're going to be able to make this one run pretty good. So... Um, yeah, I just got that mounted on there. Next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and get all those bolts torqued, get them real good and snug, and then I'll start mounting the um, exhaust man or exhaust housing to the manifold. The problem is I don't have, I don't know if I have any bolts. I'm going to have to look and see. I might have to run in town and get bolts, or I might have to see if Mason has any. I don't know. I just got to look around. If not, I have all thread and I'll just cut studs for it, but I don't want to mess with that. It'll take forever. Anyways, uh, let's get this thing mounted. Going really smooth so far. I didn't have any bolts for, to hold the exhaust housing onto the manifold, and I found four perfect bolts somehow, and just my random coming stuff. But they're 13 millimeter bolts. I don't know what the thread pitch is, but a 13 wrench fits on there perfect. They don't rub the housing or anything. Look really good on there. So we got those mounted. Uh, one thing that sucks is I have lost my adapter to put my EGT probe in this, so that freaking sucks because I have no clue where that's at. I cannot find it. I took it out of my old manifold before I sold this turbo and I just cannot find it. But before we mount the center section, which I've already done some testing and I think it's gonna fit perfect. But before we mount the center section of the turbo and hook up the boost pipe, um, we're gonna go ahead and do the down pipe. That way I just have more room. The thing that I ran into is the old turbo had an HX40 style down pipe and my turbo has a um, <clears throat> 462, it's like a half marmon or a full marmon. I can't remember, but I got this from Keating Machine. If you guys do anything like this, Keating Machine, I've always had really good luck being able to find stuff from them. And for me, Tennessee's only a two-day ship, but I got this bad boy. This will mount directly to the back of our um, housing, just like that. Or you can honestly, I don't know, you might be able to buy a whole downpipe cheaper, honestly. Because I know, I think HX40 downpipe's 100 bucks. This was 70 with the clamp, though. I got the clamp, too. So, just put that guy on there right there. We're gonna use our welding table to hold this thing still. And some of them, I like how some of them actually slide around or go inside of the pipe. Unfortunately, this one does not. So, we're just gonna butt it up and use the MIG welder. I would use the TIG, but guys, I'm really rusty. I haven't TIG welded in months, ever since the move and everything, and I just don't wanna screw it up. So I'm gonna MIG weld it on there. Hopefully it looks halfway decent. 
and we will get the exhaust mounted and hopefully we can go drive this thing. You guys, I'm not sponsored by Milwaukee or anything like that. I wish I was, maybe one day, but I'm just gonna say, if you don't have one of these underhood lights, I bought similar lights to these and this one takes it out of the park. If you don't have one, you need to buy one. You'll thank me later, I promise, because the thing is badass. The batteries last a pretty long time. Like maybe like, I mean, it says like eight hours, that's a lie, they last maybe like an hour, but I mean, they're freaking awesome. But anyways, we got the downpipe mounted up. Had to get some new metal zip ties for it. I'm not really happy with those. The welds turned out a eh, solid five out of 10. They're gonna hold for sure. I don't think they're gonna leak either, but um, I was able to stretch that exhaust wrap enough to get it covered back all the way up to where it goes. And yeah, it's looking pretty decent. Um, I think I have enough clearance there. It might be a little close to the frame whenever we start it. I'll have to make sure it's not vibrating. Worst case scenario, I'll take that clamp loose and then just retighten it down there. But now I'm gonna put the center section in, hook the drain up here. This drain should work perfect. And hook the oil feed up and then <laughs> start the long battle of trying to get this to fit the uh, boost pipe. So here. All right guys, it is officially time for the fun part. Getting the compressor on, got the drain on. Uh, the factory drain works fine. A factory downpipe, well, a factory aftermarket downpipe with the correct flange, it bolts right up. Um, the factory drain on this S400 in the factory second gen location works. Had to do no mods to it. The oil line works with a custom fitting. Um, that I don't. You can buy these fittings somewhere, but that's something else you'll run into if you try to put one of these on. You guys can see how close it is to that shock tower, but I already checked it. And it should fit. So I'm gonna take these boots, all these boots down here, I'm gonna have to take loose. But I should be able to get this pipe on here. So this is gonna be a pretty big battle, I'm gonna guess. It's probably gonna take an estimated of probably 37 minutes of straight battling and just really wishing I didn't have to work on stuff for a living. But, and then once, hopefully we get that into the charge, get the charge pipe hooked up to the compressor, then we can uh, take it for a drive. The center cooler boots I have, it's just not gonna work. Um, no matter how I tried to bend it, it's either hitting the radiator hose, it just, the geometry is just off, but I went ahead and tightened it up. I am gonna fire the truck up real quick and just make sure the oil feed's not leaking or anything like that. And uh, yeah, so just make sure nothing's gonna get sucked in there into the uh, intake. Obviously it's gonna be breathing right there. And we are just at least gonna start it up, see if we can get a quick little exhaust clip, see how it sounds maybe. Maybe, it, maybe it'll even start, who knows, it, it might not start. The battery's been getting kind of weak in this thing. Screw it, we're gonna try it. Well, I miscalculated how long that was going to take. I'm actually about an hour and a half into it now, and I've had to get a 45 boot here, and I'm also having to shorten this like an inch, but I think once I weld this up, I'm going to be able to make it work. I'm excited to drive it, but I just kind of put myself in neutral, and I was like, okay, hold on. I, I need to just calm down for a second and get this to where I don't want to mess with it again. I am excited to drive it, but I mean, at the end of the day, I don't want to mess with this twice, so... Um, I'm gonna get this welded up here and then it will have a 45 boot in it, but this isn't a race truck um, It's probably not gonna see super high boost all the time. So I really don't care to put this 45 in um, Mason's truck this came off Mason's I've seen some of you guys in the comments talking crap on it, but we definitely agree. It's definitely kind of ghetto, but um, It does for now, but on my truck. I think it's gonna be fine. I had to cut it down a little bit And yeah, so let me try to get this welded up and see if we can make it happen <sighs> Wow this has been more of a challenge than I thought, but it's honestly not that bad. I am gonna have to freaking mess with it again because I didn't cut the pipe short enough and it's bending the boot a little bit, but I think if I cut like another inch out of it, it's gonna be fine. Um, it's, the boot's got a little bend in it right there. You can't really tell from up top. I guess you kinda can. 
I don't know guys, I'm just not really happy with that. It's just kind of ghetto looking. I don't know, this truck's clean. I want to continue the legacy of everything on it being super clean. So we're going to have to fix that. Um, I think by shortening this pipe about an inch here, that should be just regular. The boot should be in its natural shape. Um, I was, well, you can see actually, no, it's actually pushing up on this hose too. Gosh, it's that freaking hose that screws you on these things. Um, I was talking with Mason, and he's actually you know, decided to order the stuff to fix his, so whenever he orders the stuff to fix his, I may see if we can TIG something up, but it's going to take a lot of pie cuts to make this right. I mean, the easiest thing for me to do would probably be get a new compressor housing, see if I could find someone to trade me housings, because if this was just a regular one, you could probably almost use the stock second gen pipe, and I, I know I cut this pipe up, but I have tons of them laying around. I have like nine of those. So maybe I can get a compressor wheel. I don't know. I just really want to drive it like really freaking bad. So I'm going to put my dogs in the house and we're going to go drive this thing. Well guys, first impression, I'm about to run out of fuel, so that's like not good. But I'm just gonna do like a little takeoff. Um, the trans definitely needs, I need to retune the anteater because it wants to shift really early. And if I run it on the tow tune, it's not near as bad. But I'm just gonna do a 50% throttle takeoff. I don't have the EGT gauge hooked up, but I guarantee they're freaking hot. This thing runs hot. I was really hoping it was gonna spool a little better than this. Um, but. I don't know, we might have to put a little bit bigger of an injector in it and maybe put a quadzilla on it. But I really want to make this turbo work. But I'll just show you guys, I'll just do like a half throttle acceleration. It does pull pretty hard. I floored it once. You know what? Screw it. I'm close to the house. She can come get me if it breaks. She can pull me with a chain. I'll get on it a little bit for you guys. You guys have waited this long. Let's, uh, let's do like a 30 and get to downshift. Might have a boost leak. Can't tell. There we are, guys. Um, first thoughts. First thoughts so far on the S467 with seven by nines and a high output injection pump. You don't want to pull a big trailer. Nope, not a good idea. Like I said, guys, I really want to make this turbo work on this truck. Um, generally with P-Pump and VP trucks, the ultimate go-to, if you want quick spool, you want to make like 70, 80 pounds of boost, is to always put compounds on it. And then you got the common rail guys, which can put an S400 frame turbo on it, still tow a trailer, and it's fine. I want to work with this turbo some more. I want to see what we can fine tune and get this thing to drive good. Um, the, it has the edge comp box on it, and it's really just not ideal. And, and on top of everything, dude, how nasty does that look? Like, that looks so nasty just peeking up out of there at you. But, um, but anyways, guys, yeah, um, it does drive. I mean, you could, you could daily drive it for sure. I'm going to get more driving videos up tomorrow. I don't want to just give my whole spiel on it right now. But, I mean, if you know how to drive on a, on a big single, you could easily drive on this turbo with the setup. 7x9s, edge comp, and... S467, um, but I want it. I want it to be where my girlfriend get in and drive and not smoke out the whole road. And you guys get what I'm saying. I just want to make it run good. I want to make it drive good. But right off the bat, um, we need to do some tuning. I think some trans tuning is definitely going to help. Um, it definitely needs to run the RPMs up a little higher. Another big thing I almost forgot to mention: the converter. Converter plays a huge role in this. Um, these engines, these P-Pump and VP engines, they make power way up high. Um, they don't really make as much torque as like a common rail or a 6.7 Cummins down low. And that's where they can really benefit from these smaller chargers as they just get up and go. 
Um, but if I can get a high stall converter and keep my RPMs up, so basically what that means, guys, and I'll go ahead and explain it to those of you that don't know, the stall on your converter is when it starts to grab and pull the truck. Like if you were gonna do a low stall, if any of you guys have ever noticed it, like a low stall truck, um, you put it in gear and it just starts, I mean, the truck jerks forward and you let off the brake and it starts rolling real quick. The, the stall on the converter is really low. A high stall converter, you put it in drive, it probably won't even move until you start revving it up. This truck has, I believe, a stock stall in it. So as soon as I give it gas, it's, it's trying to go and it's, it's blowing smoke. But I think if we put a high stall converter in it, then it's going to get up higher a little bit and it's not going to make as much smoke down low. It's not gonna fuel as much down low. It's gonna be higher up in the RPM. So I think that's gonna play a really big role in it too, but my truck is all back together finally. So I didn't have it for like four days and she's all back together, drivable again, so I can use her. I gotta move some material around, all the stuff we have left over from the shop. And uh, yeah, without further ado, that's gonna wrap up the end of this video. Be sure you guys check out that website, order some, order a sticker, order a key tag. Airdog products, like I said at the beginning of the video. That's it guys, like I said, be sure to like, subscribe. See you guys on the next one.